Hello friends, <lacht> auf was? Wieso spreche ich schon wieder Englisch? Leute, was ist hier los? Wir sind äh, hier auf äh, Lasergurkenland und ich habe Ju. Eine Sekunde. Äh, Lasergurkenland, Vanilla, Anarchie-Server ohne Regeln. Ähm, genau, kommt doch alle mal drauf. Genau, äh, IP steht hier ja, ähm, alternativ gibt es auch die Domain sillyhuhn.com, je nachdem, was euch lieber ist oder was momentan noch besser funktioniert. Mm. Wir mm, haben heute ein spannendes Video auf dem Plan. Ach, der Dude ist im Online, was ist da los? Ähm, genau, es gibt diesen YouTube-Channel FOSDM, F aus dem, keine Ahnung. Ist wahrscheinlich sollte ich wahrscheinlich wissen, wofür das steht, aber ähm, der Kanal hat 13.000 Abonnenten. Wir schauen ein Video von 2019 an mit dem Titel Who wants to <coughs> Who wants you to <coughs> English? Who wants you to think nobody uses the A G P L and Y von John Sullivan. Ähm um, ja, Video hat 300 Aufrufe und der äh, Link zum Video ist natürlich wie immer in der Beschreibung. Wie die IP-Adresse dieses Servers. Ich hoffe, man hört was. Ich bin John Sullivan, ich bin der Executive Director der Free Software Foundation. Ich möchte mit dem sagen, dass ich nicht ein Lawyer bin und ich bin definitiv nicht jemand hier als Lawyer. Und das wird sehr schnell erkannt, als ich das Thema in diesem Talk adresse. Ich werde über the AGPL primarily from a, a policy perspective. Um, I think licenses obviously are very important in the way that they actually function in court and in the law, but they also serve as important statements of mutual purpose, set ground rules for cooperation. Um, and that's one reason I've always really appreciated this dev room is because it's the uh, licensing, licensing and legal and policy dev room that acknowledges those two purposes together. I'm also feeling a little bit guilty slash embarrassed about kind of pulling a BuzzFeed title for the presentation here. At least it's not uh, five things you'll be shocked to learn about the AGPL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I will try to, to deliver here. Uh, and I want to thank you to say, say thanks to Tom, Bradley, Karen, and uh, Fontana for putting this together year after year. I uh, really appreciate the chance to speak here on behalf of the Free Software Foundation. And I also hope to see everybody on Monday at Copy Left Um I'll be talking about a uh, different network freedom related issue, which is uh, proprietary JavaScript and Copy Left JavaScript, which Karen and Bradley also talked about at the keynote this morning. So uh, partly because of my own inadequacies uh, and partly because of events that have happened since I submitted this proposal back in November, um, I can't actually cover everything that I put in the abstract in 25 minutes. Um, I am here. Der macht doch ein längeres Video, Junge. Ach so, ja, wahrscheinlich ADL, nur eine gewisse Redezeit. Um, Man kennt's. Who out there is saying otherwise? And uh, why I think many of the criticisms that we're hearing lately are are basically off the mark, uh, and that some of the efforts that we're seeing to to start drafting new licenses to address similar problem areas as what the AGPL seeks to tackle uh, are premature. That being said, I also think the FSF should take some responsibility for the current state of affairs and these things happening because I don't think that we've been out there advocating enough for this license or uh, building up the materials uh, to help people use it. And oh, interesting. that's something that I intend to try and change. I think we have been um, working on that already. And I'm hoping that some of you will help us do that. Uh, the resources that you see that are on GPL for GPL. Ey, bin ich noch nicht richtig wach oder ist der Typ irgendwie hart zu verstehen? Also ich meine, wenn ich das schon schwer verstehe, dann versteht ihr wirklich gar nichts mehr. Nicht weil ihr dumme Kinder seid oder so, sondern einfach weil die Audioqualität bei euch noch mieser ist. Wahrscheinlich versteht ihr auch weniger, weil ich die ganze Zeit rede und ihr nur mich hört und nicht den Dude. Aber da eh keiner zuschaut, ist eigentlich eine entspannte Sache. 
Ist ja nur ein Werbevideo, kein Informationsvideo. Ich habe noch nie von der AGPL gehört. Kannst du bitte mal erklären, was die ist? Ich bin License Beginner. Wo sind denn die Introduction Videos? Oh, hat er gerade... Was? Okay, ich lese mal vor. It's a modified version of the ordinary GNU GPL version 3. It has one added requirement. If you run a modified program on a server and let other users communicate with it, <coughs> with it there, your server must also allow them to download the source code corresponding to the modified version uh, running there. Okay. Ich weiß gar nicht, was die GPL3 im Detail von einem verlangt, aber ich dachte, dass die GPL3 ein E immer dazu verpflichtet, den Source Code zu veröffentlichen, auch wenn man es modifiziert hat. Und hier klingt es so, als müsste man den Source Code nur veröffentlichen, wenn Leute ähm, diesen Server verwenden. Komisch, also keine Ahnung. Berkeley TV, 
Pelican, a static site generator, and I wanted to highlight that um, one thing I'm going to touch on is the way debates about license choices are happening within projects, and Pelican has a, a bug, an issue open where people are trying to persuade them to switch away from the AGPL, other people are arguing against that. That's an example of conversations I'm going to talk more about in a few minutes. Next cloud, calendaring, notes, uh, contact management. Next you cloud have you uh, pretty much a full replacement for Google Cloud or iCloud. Asteroid server, so if you have an Android phone, you can get only free software applications. The server side is HTTL. Anki, so the pet favorite project of mine for flashcards. It's responsible for my terrible German, uh, but, but the software is great. Get Annex, distributed file synchronization. Uh, so there's there's so many more. I mean, there's uh, GNU Net, there's, uh, which recently changed AGPL. There's Dead Sources, which has been an uh, incredibly important tool for analyzing and searching all the source code in Debian. Um, the web UI for the Software Heritage Project that was mentioned on this panel with AGPL. Um, uh, sorry, wait. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> hmm? uh, sorry, I've, I've just received news that MongoDB is no longer under the AGPL. Thanks, Richard. Uh, <laughs> I also need to highlight that I did not do my due diligence in diving into these projects. There are other factors in their governance and uh, structures which may matter. So some of these projects may have CLAs, um, which may undermine the usefulness of the AGPL and could be objectionable in their own right. The fact remains that they do all publish AGPL versions that are forkable uh, under that license. So, um, Oh, I forgot to mention the searching for repositories on GitHub that are licensed under the AGPL uh, returns 70,003 results, uh, excluding node forks. <clears throat> so why and uh, when to use the AGPL? People often write free software, particular copy of that software, because they want their code to be shared. Right, so there was a rude awakening when um, technology developed such that companies uh, were able to take that code and run services, including modified versions of that software, without providing the source code as copyleft would normally require you to do. Uh, many businesses were also bothered by this, and not just individual developers, uh, because it's sort of a betrayal of the copyleft bargain and undermine that sense of shared purpose um, that I talked about at the very beginning. Uh, you can see that this is a very moderate recommendation of the AGPL. Uh, it says, uh, we recommend using the GNU or GPL as a license for programs often used on servers. Um, the reason this is a very mild recommendation for a specific situation is because we, we want to be very careful not to overpromise what the AGPL can achieve because there are so many freedom and ethical issues involved in network services and, and computing on the network that are uh, about more than the license of the software. Um, so we want to be careful about that, but I would still, you know, personally argue for a very expansive definition of programs often used on servers, because a program that today doesn't seem to be useful on a server can very easily turn out next year to be uh, part of someone's server offering, and that, that happened in the past. You would have thought that the new unit was a program that would be used on a server, but now most search engines, if you type something into the search bar about a conversion, will return a result, you know, inches to centimeters, and likely that many of those are using a program like units on the back end. Uh, so but to understand this a little bit better, I'd like to, to start with what the AGPL does not help with. Um, I mentioned that basket of issues that relate to network freedom. So even if the software is AGPL, if it's on someone else's server and you don't have access to that, you don't have the ability to add your own mod to make your own modifications on that server, um, you still don't have freedom, right? The server operator has freedom you don't have uh, freedom. It doesn't solve the problem of uh, service as a software substitute, or so, sorry, so, yeah, service as a software substitute. If you're using somebody else's server to edit your photos, make your documents, you still don't have control over the software that um, you're using to do this. Uh, similarly, the HTML does not ensure that the uh, server operator will do a good job keeping up with security patches. 
does not ensure that the server operator will not do other sorts of bad things, like run a program that logs all the traffic on the server, totally separate from the AGPL work, and do something bad with your data. Uh, so this license is not going to help with this. Wow, well, flame boom, boy. And it's not going to stop big companies from running your software, because like any free software license, Boah, which is ja anders gut erhalten. and allows commercial activity, uh, part of the bargain is allows other people to use that work commercially. The benefit is it's super cool, uh, and the potential is always there for oh, stimmt, people ich to ja hier What the agency does help with, uh, portability and decentralization. So a lot of the problems that we face in the current network world have to do with monopolies and silos, you know, the Facebook uh, of the world. HTL is part of the solution for addressing this because it allows multiple operators to run the same platform. Users can move from one to the other when they don't like um, particular bits of bad behavior in each place. Uh, <coughs> so that put this on uh, doesn't help with this, but I think HTL can help with these things. Um, it can help with security because if we believe that free software is a precondition to genuine security, then a server operator that publishes their source code and invites people to inspect it and accept patches that applies them should be in a better security position than a server operator that does not do that. Uh, likewise, other kinds of bad behavior, bad privacy policies can be checked by the decentralization and silo effect because if users don't like Facebook's new privacy policy and they have the option to move to another Facebook-like thing with all of their data, uh, they would be able to do that. And just like free software um, in the traditional sense checks distribution of malware um, or inclusion of malware, the same thing can happen on the network. So it does help with those things. We just need to be very careful not to overpromise that it falls to them because other steps are required. Security patches have to be applied, you know, and uh, there has to be options to get the data out, not just the software. So. And uh, don't forget that using HBL means you're, you're contributing free software back to the community and, and step away from assessing that one service. And remember that free software can be repurposed in other ways beyond what it was originally written for. So anybody who is publishing their code on the HBL is already doing a positive thing, um, even if they're not providing the best data portability or something like that, because they're making an active contribution to the free software community. They're respecting their users, and that helps uh, advance free software as a whole. So critics of the HGPL who might disagree with some of these things, well, uh, some argue that the HGPL is too strong. Um, how many people have seen this policy before? Okay. Well, it doesn't get much clearer. Google's policy says, uh, warning, code license under the GNU Feral General Public License may not be used at Google. May not in capital. Was heißt denn Main Nord? Darf man nicht uh, oder? The reason seems to be because, uh, Dieses Capital heißt, ist doch immer irgendwo defined, oder? <lacht> In diesen ganzen Legal Texten steht am Anfang irgendwo Main Nord, Must Nord. Wenn es groß geschrieben ist, dann steht da irgendwo genau, was das heißt. Nur ist meistens dasselbe, aber mein Englisch ist nicht on point genug, um zu verstehen, was Main Nord heißt. <lacht> ah, Leute, ich habe Spiel nachgeschaut. Das englische Wort Spiel, das ist eine schnelle oder lange Rede mit dem Ziel, jemanden zu überzeugen. Ähm, das heißt, wenn es wieder vorkommt, ein bisschen Bescheid, ne? They are worried that the HDL is so potentially strong or expansive that it could force them to accidentally have to publish unpublished software or uh, publish proprietary software under a free license. Uh, but it goes so far as to say, do not install HDL license programs on your workstation Google issued laptop or Google issued phone without explicit authorization. Uh, so don't even think about Nextcloud, you know, don't even think about any of those programs that we listed before. Uh, but it goes a little bit deeper than this. So in fact, uh, Google employees have directly asked authors of AGPL programs to relicense their work. This is a quote from Joey Hess, uh, somebody that I look up to uh, quite a bit in free software. He's done a lot of amazing work. Uh, saying that he's been approached several times uh, by Google employees who would like to use the software, asking him to change the license. Um, this doesn't mean that this is an official Google policy or that these people were acting with, uh, you know, under the direction of, of somebody, but Google employees apparently asked them to use. 
also to Google's credit and these employees' credit, they were asked to have to switch to the GPL, which is still a copyright license, um, rather than to a lack of permissive license, but uh, still it's pressure against um, a clause which accomplishes important things for user freedom. So I also read this policy as a challenge to uh, software developers out there that part of why Google Google's policy says the risks outweigh the benefits. So I take this as a challenge for everybody to write more and better software under the age of Yell, make those benefits greater, and make the policy have to be reconsidered. Ja, solange man damit Google auf den Sack gehen kann, ist das doch eine geile Idee. Es gibt doch irgendeinen Trick, wie man die Dinge an- und ausmachen kann, oder? Warte, wenn ich da einen Schalter hinmache oder so? Ja, ist jetzt besser als nichts, ne, Leute? Es gibt irgendwas Cooles da, ich weiß das schon, aber kein Bock jetzt da. Enforcement concerns. 
Um, I think companies should be, first of all, funding the enforcement efforts done by nonprofits. Uh, the enforcement done by Conservancy, by the FSS, helps create a norm and a culture where people follow the licenses, and that will benefit you know, other copyleft holders as well. Um, and I think companies should consider working with nonprofits or reconsider the model of whether they have to be the copyright owners of the software just because they're generating a business around it. Those two things don't necessarily have to be uh, to go together. And I think there's companies out there that uh, that have viable business models around software they don't hold the copyright to because we stop. That's part of the point. Okay. So I'm gonna ask you to help um, in several ways here. You know, first of all, freedom first, money second. Um, like I said, you know, the <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, we got two, we got three, we have a movement, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, we want commercial activity to be welcome in the free software community, it's important. Um, in fact, they you know, attempt to prohibit commercial activity is against the principles of software freedom, but the ground rules for respecting freedom are just that, they're the ground rules. Uh, money comes back to that. Challenge is to find ways to have viable businesses within those ground rules. And don't forget that it's those ground rules that created all the software to begin with. And so it gets suspicious when people start trying to take that other way, uh, take what was created, and then uh, follow the different rules going forward. You just need to be able to create your software, uh, or any later version. If you don't trust the FSS, uh, you can specify a proxy option. You can make the decision. Um, but as, a, as I was alluding to earlier, if there are issues, and we do need to release new issues of license, um, it's helpful if you have already given permission to go along with that or given an organization permission to make the decision about whether a new version of license public is good for the project. Use the SNAZI logo. Uh, be visible. Like I said, if you're out there um, using the HBL, using the HBL software or even better, writing it, um, talk about that. Participate in some of the comment threads that are out there um, arguing about licensing choices. And please, if your employer Konnte man früher nicht mal rechtsklicken mit dem Schwert machen? Ist da irgendwas weggegangen? rather than asking every free software project to become a permissibly licensed project so that it can be used in the, in the product that you're working on. Uh, and fork when necessary. Uh, and thanks to Chris for uh, being part of the effort, Chris Lamb for being part of the effort on that with uh, the Commons Clause, Redis Labs module. So here's a pipe dream of mine. Choose the license.com, can we get AGPL on the front page? Uh, here's my first tab, suggested text that fits in with the other licenses that are listed there. It is a qualitatively different license um, that addresses What is the lowest with the internet here? By any of the offerings that are there now. Also, I just noticed today that Apache is no longer on the front page. I don't know when that happened. Uh, but this one talked about self-fulfilling prophecies earlier. Um, choose license.com is really, you know, has a big influence on what licenses people choose for their project. One of the first things they see. We're here to help you. I, I admitted at the beginning that we haven't done as much as we could have, but we are here to help. And if you have questions about the agency, uh, please write up. Licensing it up comes out of it. Thank you. Gibt's noch Fragen? Jetzt habe ich wieder die ganzen Tools in meinem Inventar gespammt. Ne? Hey, uh, for the talk. What's your opinion on lesser HTML? Hat die mich erwischt? I mean, it's not like official license, but I see pretty often. Yeah, I um, I think that uh, that's a. I I personally think it's a good idea, and I would like to see us um, get some of the people who have also told me that they think it's a good idea. Let's get some of the people together um, and start talking about how to move forward with uh, with it and what kind of drafting process might be appropriate. Thanks for your talk. 
Are there measures in AGPL to force or at least encourage network operators to be transparent about the changes they make, they make on the, the software that they are saving to the customer? Like as a software user, as a, like a Mastodon user, how can I know that the, the network operator has changed the software in the server? Okay, Leute, ich muss kurz mal auf die Auslastung vom Server schauen, weil das könnte tatsächlich der Server sein. Hier heißt es. Sind die an Fallschaden gestorben? Ähm ja, aber keine Ahnung, der Dude lag, laggt wahrscheinlich immer. Wahrscheinlich hat er nur 3 FPS und denkt, das ist der Server oder so. Aber. Ähm Ich will doch mal kurz nachschauen. Mambo Number 4. So. Uh, ja, keine Ahnung, was man da nachschauen kann. Also die CPU-Auslastung ist hier bei 200, 150. Was war die? oder? Ja, Leute. English on point. Okay. Also die CPU ist das Ding ist immer noch... Was habe ich gesagt? Habe ich 200 gesagt? Nee, oder? 140, 100... Die Kiste reagiert gut. 217, 290, 222 und es geht immer noch alles fix. Also ich habe echt keine Ahnung wo ich monitoren kann, äh, ob das der Server ist. Wahrscheinlich ist es auch eine Limitation einfach in Java und nicht von der CPU, vom Prozess oder was auch immer. Naja. Whatever. Okay. Weiter geht's. Um, so, not just by being a license. Um, there may be some sort of technical things you can build in. Here at the author, may HBO program, some technical things you may be able to build in to help you recognize when software has been altered, but that kind of gets back to that list of things the HBO doesn't solve, you're still trusting the software operator. Um, but, you know, it's not that different to me than GPL compliance in general, because uh, how many of us get a binary and then get what a company claims to be source code and sort of assume they're the same thing. Um, you know, without reproducible build, you can't 100% verify that either. So it's kind of a similar dynamic. Um, I know as a program, if you were able to get a legal process to start, then... Oh, ich hab die Antwort nicht ausgelebt, ich idiot find out what was actually running on the, on the server. So at some point that information would, would become known. But yeah, up front, you know, whatever the server, they have total control of the software, so you can put some hash there, they can change the hash. Okay, two questions. I recently saw that a program that was proprietary for a long time became pre-licensed under the HACL. So there are still people nein, es ist an. Ach nee, ach das droppt da rein. Thank you. Uh, when I've tried to use the AGPL, the legal counsel I've received is that the redistribution clause, the copyleft clause, is too vague and it's hard to figure out the parameters around when it applies. And in reading, it looks like that was 
Some people see that as one of the goals of the license is to keep that really vague and, and oh. it's potentially expansive. Mir ist immer schwer da reingekommen. Microblog, uh, or the static page generator you mentioned, it was the content that's that's written in that system under the AGTL. How how oh, can you describe where the limits are so that we can reduce that FUD and, and help people feel comfortable using it, feeling like it's that they can understand the consequences? Yeah, I, I, I understand where that's coming from, and I think that one of the things that we need is a better. So right now we have a few questions about the AGPL and the GPL FAQ, and I think we need to build out a more developed list of questions about the AGPL specifically. Um, again, some of these questions are very similar to the questions about what mod what makes a derivative work when you're distributing something covered under the GPL that you've modified, and the stuff does want to help people does want to help people get a clear understanding about that. Um, there's also, you know, to be fair, only so far that we should go in helping proprietary software makers understand how far they can go with proprietary incorporation before the copyright provisions trigger. Uh, but it's not intentionally being vague. It's just, you know, we have we have to focus on our priorities to what our mission is. All right, let's take John. Thank you. Okay. Naja, viel habe ich jetzt nicht gelernt über Lizenzen, aber let's go. Das war ein Video hier von, wie ist der Dude? John Sullivan oder so? Ja, John Sullivan. Ähm, Link ist wie immer in der Beschreibung. Und das war es dann auch für diese Episode. IP-Adresse zu diesem Server hier ist auch in der Beschreibung. Und ähm, ja, dann würde ich sagen, sehen wir uns in der nächsten Folge dieser Dauerwerbesendung wieder.